welcome to my channel, Diane's Sewing Room. So if you watched my last video, you'll know that I was making a decision on this coat that I'm making. And thank you for all your suggestions and ideas, they've been really helpful. So I've decided which one and also what I'm going to do about the lack of fabric issue. So I'm going to show you that in a moment. Something else that I've been uh, having a little look at is I said I wanted to do something with all my little bits of scrap fabric and I've been watching a little video um, by Kate at the last homely house on um, patchwork and English paper piecing which is what she was doing and I thought that looked really fun and something that you can be getting on with while you're just sat especially now we've got winter evenings coming up here in the UK so you don't always want to be away at your sewing machine sometimes you might want to be just sat listening to music or something or maybe watching a TV show and doing some hand stitching so I thought that would be a really nice sort of long term project to be getting on with I have decided against lining this coat, this particular coat in a patchwork design because cutting the shapes out would make it all unravel so maybe not a good idea yes so what I mean by that is when I come to cut out the shape of the lining for the coat, all my little bits that I've got stitched together will all then have raw edges and all will start to come apart and to stitch every single one down the sides and round the armholes would just be ridiculous really after all the work of putting the patchwork together so maybe a larger patchwork design would be okay but there really were lots of little scraps that I got so I'll show you, it's on the board behind me, what I've been up to so I've already started attaching them together and I think you're supposed to wait until you've got loads and then just try and design it all on the table but I was just excited to get attaching some and seeing what they look like so as you can see I've got this going on and I've created, I'll let you have another little look at that in a minute a little box that can live beside the sofa somewhere and I've started cutting lots of different little scrap fabrics up, different colours. I've got my small pair of scissors in there, needle and cotton, and some pins in here. And for my little hexagons, I've been using all kinds of paper. So flyers that come through, promotional things, squared paper, um, old envelopes, junk envelopes. So I actually drew mine, but I'm sure you can get one and print it off, uh, off the internet somewhere. I faffed about for ages trying to <laughs> draw mine accurately. So I've, I've done that as an inch because that's what Kate from the last Homely House was doing hers at. I thought that was nice. A nice size because they look really good with all the different colours together. So that's an inch. Each of these is an inch rather. That's not an inch across. Each of these sides is an inch. And then you cut your shape out bigger than that so you can fold it around and baste it to your papers so I'm sure lots of you have done this before and already know what I'm talking about but I've not done this before I've done other patchwork but I've not done this so that's why I'm having a go at this I thought it was a nice little ongoing project for the winter months and I just wanted to get going on that today so that's what I've done. So that's my little box that can come and live beside the sofa when I feel like doing some hand stitching. And I'll give you a closer look. So you're also always supposed to use sort of craft fabrics for this kind of thing. And I've got lots of viscose and shallow and calf 100% um, cottons. Um, and you're not supposed to mix them. Well, I am doing. <laughs> because these fabrics would have been wasted in little bits anyway. So I'm just giving it a go and let's see what it turns out like. And I am going to quilt it properly when it's all finished. I'll just have to make sure I do a delicate wash when I wash it and take care with it. This won't be one for the dogs to sit on and unpick when it's finished. I'm a little bit croaky to get it. I think I've got a bit of a cough coming on again. So please excuse me croaking away here. So this is what I've got up to so far. And what I'm trying to do is... What I noticed on Kate's was that colours were sort of blending. So you've got sort of greens going into blues across it in different areas and that looked really nice. Now I've not really planned this as such but I am trying to get so that you've got 
some blues coming out this way and the whites, black shades going this way, some pinks over here. I'll put this one next to it because it's got yellow and the darker ones. But I don't know, that might change as I go along and as you can see, we've still got the papers on the back, they come out at a later date. You just unpick the basting stitches and you have to be really careful to join them all here. So that's something I've been having a go at today and getting my box ready. And now I'll show you the bits that I've cut out for the coat and what I've decided to do about not quite having enough fabric for that. So here we are, here's the pattern that I'm using. So a lot of people like this one and this is the one that I've made in the more formal coat in the navy blue. So I am making this one again. I'm doing this version, version B, but I'm doing it just a touch shorter. I am keeping these flaps either side, but there wasn't enough fabric for that. So what I've decided to do is I've got this full leather look, which I've used for some of my bag making. And I'm going to do one side of the belt in that, full leather, like I did on my other jacket, because I used a navy for the reverse side of the belt on that one. And then these panels, which go either side at the front, front overlay, heel up, I've cut these out in it as well. I've also made them a touch shorter, as you can see. This is all about making the fabric fit the pattern here. So I'm using this. So it's sort of a beige with a fleck in it. And I think if I hold those together, as you can see, there's a bit of a beige in the fabric as well. I think that goes really well. So that's what I'm doing about that. Those flaps at the front, and a few people have said do those in a contrast, which was a good idea. So I'm using that for that. The reverse side for the belt, and also I've cut a couple of pieces like this. I did wonder whether to do something at the sleeves. Not a frilly sleeve like this one, but maybe just either a band with a button, or maybe just use that as some trim at the bottom of the sleeve. So that's what I'm going to do with that. And I've got all my pieces cut out and I will show you all those now. So you've got a back piece and that's cut on the fold and what I've done is for this particular coat I've just folded it up a little bit at the bottom because there wasn't quite enough to make it that length but almost that length. Look I've only uh, turned it up by just over an inch there, maybe an inch and a half. And This is a front piece and you cut two and transfer all your markings. And then you have a facing piece like this. And again, you're going to have to take some off the bottom if you're shortening it like I did a little bit. And it's coming out there, look. And for that, the front facing, you also need to cut two of interfacing, which I've not done yet. I'll be cutting that later. And then we've got a back facing piece in fabric and also in an interfacing. You have two of your sleeve pieces like this on the straight grain and then of course the markings. This is the overlay piece which I did in the faux leather for this one. Now I'm undecided whether to leave that edge raw because it doesn't fray or whether to actually just back it in some lining fabric, that one. So you're supposed to cut four, I've just cut two and I may cut two in lining. And we've got the tie belt. So it says cut four, so I've cut two in this sort of wool fabric and I've cut two in the fur leather. These are the belt loop carriers, I've just done that in the wool. And then you cut four of the pockets and cut them in pairs and I've just cut these just a little bit shorter just a little bit because I didn't quite have enough laying it on the fabric left so the pockets are just ever so slightly smaller and I cut four of those and then you've got the upper collar and you have to cut that on the fold that's why there wasn't enough to make the pockets the full size because this has to be done on the fold so you cut one in fabric and one in interfacing of the upper collar and then the under collar one on fold of fabric and one on fold of interfacing so that's all my pieces and now it's a case of putting it together. 
Right, so next day now I've had a little think and this is what I've decided to do. So I've cut out this lining fabric to back these faux leather panels for the front because I, I didn't think that would be very substantial on its own. And I've stitched one already. So I tried just understitching it and snipping it and folding it back, but didn't seem to be holding very well. So I have top stitched it close to the edge look in a brown, because that was the one that looked best, because I tried a lighter colour and it just didn't look right. So that's what we've got. We've got a lining fabric in this colour, which is only going to be underneath anyway. And these panels go here like this. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to like these on or not. If I don't like it on the coat, I can always take them off and unpick them. And I'll make my decision before I line the coat. So that's what I've decided for that. And then the next step is you create some little darts here on the coat. So I'm going to do that next. I'm not under stitching this one because it didn't really seem to add anything to the last one. It still needed top stitching. So I'm just pinning it back and then top stitching it on the other side. So I've done a little bit more on the jacket. I'm not sure if these are staying or not. So I've made the panels for the front out of this faux leather and I've lined the back with this lining fabric. So I'm going to try those on the jacket and then if I don't like them I will just take them off. So I'll continue with those on for now, try it on and then unpick it if I don't like it. So it's on. Do I like it? I'm not sure. You'll have to see what it looks like with the rest of it on. Stitching my front to my back and my shoulder seams here. It's very thick at this point because I've got these flaps in as well. So this is a, a number 90 needle, this one, and it's ballpoint needle. And the reason I'm using that is just because it doesn't stab at the, um, the wool fabric so much as a regular needle. So I've put the collar on now but I've had to walk it through so I've had to keep turning the wheel and walking it through because it is just so thick in places and I did find this last time I made this coat as well but with having this on this time it's even thicker so places like this I mean you're supposed to lap it but it's tricky so I'm going to trim it away before I put the next layer on but some of it may have to be hand stitched for the next layer of the collar so that's it up to now. I think that looks quite nice with that. So many layers at this point that I have actually ended up hand stitching it just here. Because you can see how thick it is. And I was walking it through the machine and it just wasn't having any of it. And this is a heavy duty machine as well. So there is quite a lot of layers there. So just round here with the facing, inside facing, meets the collar here. And meets this layer where this collar fits. I have just hand stitched. So it's looking like this. I think I'll leave them on for now. I've just tried it with a bit of fabric round as if it had had a belt on and yeah I think it's looking okay. So I think I'll leave those on for now and carry on. I'm about to put my sleeves in so I've got my coat inside out and I've got my sleeve here look. match up my notches. My underarm seam. I'm going to be walking it over this bit again because look how bulky it is here. And two notches there at the back. And the 
shoulder point there. So I've now tried the bell about three different ways and none of them seem to look right so it was quite thick to stitch through the faux leather and the um, the sort of wool fabric folded over so I tried it just single and then I tried it as a tie belt that was too thick I've tried it with a gold sort of slider on it that didn't look quite right and now I've got d-rings on it so I'm going to flip you around so you can see so this is the current belt that I'm going for like this with just two d-rings in and I think I'm going to stick with that and I need to put some belt loops either side here and here it's got pockets in them I need to hem it and do the sleeves I haven't got any lining for it yet so that's going to have to be a job for another day so here it is it's not yet lined it's very thick I don't feel like any uh, cold will be getting through this you can see the collar is really thick so it's really thick fabric and this was the belt I decided on so it's sort of the wool fabric on one side and faux leather on the other I've chopped quite a bit off to make it like that and put two d-rings in there just deep pockets These are the flaps that I decided on with the lining underneath and um, belt hoops out of the wool fabric, I think it's wool, wool mix or whatever it is. I don't know what it is because I was give, gifted it so by, from a friend so I don't know what the actual makeup of the fabric is. Stamp it again. Well, I hope you enjoyed having a look what I did with the coat. I've still got to line it, so I think I may do another video on how to line it because it's an unlined pattern. So I didn't show the whole process because there was quite a few stages where I stopped and I had to walk the machine through and the fabric is very thick. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a comment below on what you think and I hope to be back soon with another video. Please like and subscribe. Back soon. Thanks for watching.